in this video we are going to discuss what is feature scaling and why do we need it so in this video we will build an end-to-end -end, uh, regression model and we will see the difference when we uh, use a linear model on scale data versus non-scale data so this is going to be a very interesting and uh, informative video uh, please do watch this video till the end and like and subscribe if you like this video okay so first of all i'll uh, we will discuss what is feature scaling so feature scaling is a method which is used to normalize the range of the feature or the data okay so it should be features of the data okay or you can call these independent variables so what is the range range is basically your maximum value minus the minimum value so when we say that normalize the range then you can say that in many situations uh, you can say that you have a variable in your data which is uh, some of the values are very high and some of the values are extremely low so it is basically the thing which we do not want when we are uh, making any uh, any uh, regression model or any linear model okay and we will discuss that which are the models which are affected by this problem of uh, uh, and we do, and we need feature scaling for them okay so basically uh, this is the reason why do we need a feature scaling okay and here if we see that what are what are the reasons why feature scaling is required then you can see that the coefficients of the linear models are influenced by the scale of the variable what does it mean that uh, linear models coefficient basically are influenced by the uh, scale of the variable so let us say that one variable is very high high in the scale you can say a salary that is going in the millions or hundreds of thousand then you can consider another variable as age so you see that uh, the coefficients are basically dominated by your scale of the variable okay so basically uh, uh, variables with the bigger magnitude as i just given an example of the salary so they tend to dominate your model okay so that should uh, basically is a problem okay then gradient descent is also something which converges faster on the scale data and simply you can also understand that the euclidean based distance which we calculate as uh, you know as uh, amongst the variable that is also something uh, which requires your variables to be scaled precisely and uh, pca also actually prefers the features which are centered at zero so basically these are a few things and plus one more thing if we would like to add in here uh, which is the compute time so let me write that also here so you can also make an uh, understanding by it that obviously if your data is on a very high scale then the compute time which is required for your machine will be larger okay because it will use a higher com higher computations okay it, it needs for that the higher time and higher resources okay now uh, we can say that which are the models affected by the feature scale then you can say that linear and logistic regression basically these are the parametric models neural network support vector machines knn k-means clustering and pca which i mentioned earlier knn because uh, basically which all are the distance based metrics which calculate the distance so you can say the k-means uh, are affected by the uh, scale okay so what is standardization so if you have come across the term standard deviation g score then you need, you might know that basically uh, we calculate we replace every value in the data set by the g score then what is g score g score is basically tells you that how uh, by what distance your data point is above the mean okay so basically uh, how it's standard deviation away your uh, data point is from the mean so uh, so basically how do we calculate it so that is g equals to x minus mean of x so basically this is your variable value of your variable and this is the mean of your uh, variable so let us say you have the column age so this is a one particular observation this is the mean of your complete uh, age column and this is the standard deviation of your uh, variable or column okay so this is the way we calculate the g score and we simply replace your variable value with the g score so remember this it will uh, why i'm telling you because it is something very important and you need to understand the process before going towards the implementation so that is very important that that is why i'm emphasizing it and what is g score it, it basically tells how below or above your data point is from the mean so how many g score above or how many standard deviation above so you see that we divide uh, the uh, x minus mean of 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 x by standard deviation of x so it basically tells you it's st standardize your data into standard deviation okay so it tells you how much it is off and on okay so i hope that makes sense if not please do let me know in the comment section and i will let you know okay now to perform this exercise basically i do not need matplotlib i am simply going to use pandas seaborn 
I do not need this also. Okay. Now I'm using the Boston data set. So I'm uh, importing it from the SQLint library. Then I'm using the standard scaler, which I will basically use to scale my data. Then I'm using linear regression from linear model because I will perform a linear regression and, uh, and check uh, what difference does it make. So, and then I use mean square error and R squared. So you know that these are basically the performance metrics for your linear regression. So now, first of all, here I am loading my my data set so you can see that i'm basically loading my data set i'm setting the feature names and median value is the my target uh, variable so basically using all the variables i will try to predict what is the median value so you can take a look at here and you see that the crime rate z and indus and everything here and this is the ratio of black which is stated as b okay and this is l set so if you want to understand these variables you can use this command boston data set descr which is which will print the description so now you can see that we have a uh, total 506 of observation and uh, cream is per capita crime and zn is proportion of residential land zoned for lots over 25000 square feet similarly is is proportion of owner occupied units built prior to 1940 uh, and you can see that property tax here and b is the proportion of blacks by town and l state is percent lower status of the population that how much uh, population is at lower status and this is my target variable which is median value okay and this data set is basically at uci ml housing project so uci basically ho hosts a lot of uh, data set if you want to practice on something do check out this url archive.ics.uci.edu uh, okay so these are basically some references now you can print the description or describe your data so you can see that so one more thing when we talk about standardization we mean that our data shall be centered at zero mean should be zero and standard deviation should be one that is the ideal situation but here if you see then the mean is 3.6 and for this jaden it is 11.36 it is 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 the mean is 68.57 so you see that it is essentially not zero if we talk about a standard deviation then here it is for crime it is 8.60154 and here it is 23 similarly here it is 91.29 then you can see that this data is clearly not standardized so basically uh, what we need to do that we need to scale it uh, as it is an assumption of linear models and this is usually a practice when using PCA or any linear or distance based model. So first of all, to for this purpose, I will basically divide my data into train and test set. So this is basically here. I am creating a train test split, and I have and this is something which you can get from here in the SQLint library. So you can load it from SQLint model selection is where we load it. Import train test split, and it will basically create my data into two folds train and test set let me run this now i have it here and now you can see that i have my data here so first of all before scaling i will basically build a simple model uh, without any regularization or any kind of penalty i will build a simple degree, uh, linear regression on my unscaled data and i will print out the coefficients so you see that these are my model coefficient this is my intercept and this is basically my score so what i'll do that as we note that for linear models the perform for the linear regression the performance metrics are basically used as mean squared error and r squared i hope you are familiar with that if not do let me know i will create a separate video on that okay or i can give you some articles which you can refer to so uh, if you see here then you can see that let me not just uh, round it for now that will be better i think so if you see that then r squared on the unscaled data is 0 0.3523 and uh, msc is my 33.4489 okay so these are my uh, basically uh, performance on my unscaled data now uh, let us see uh, how we can standardize it so we will use scikit-learn and i have imported the library here and let me just uh, give you a flavor of that so here basically from sklearn.preprocessing i am importing standard scalar and i will use it to scale down my data okay 
so now how i will do that is simply i will just create a object of my standard scalar and then i will simply fit it to the train data because remember this always fit your always fit your you know scalar on the train data and then use it to fit on your test data so do remember that this is very important okay uh, another thing that if you want to uh, uh, look at want to learn other things of feature engineering such as binning or scaling other types of scaling or or pandas then you do check out my other uh, playlist okay so for now i am using the standardization here so basically i will fit my uh, as uh, as we are fitting our scalar on the training data so i am fitting it here then i am basically transforming my train and test set so basically i am then scaling my train and test set here and if you want to see that what your scalar has learned so basically you see that for all of these variable if you want to see that what is the mean of your variables uh, all these variables which we have uh, then you can see that the mean is stored in the mean underscore variable so you can see that this is my mean and the standard deviation of each variable if we want to learn then it is stored in the scale underscore variable so you can see that these are basically the standard deviation of our uh, variables now what i will do that since i have created an scaled variable now for both of my train and test set i will simply this now if you would like to look at it at now then this is basically a numpy array and that might not be making any sense right now so let me just print once and you see that this is basically after scaling this is my numpy array and it does not make any uh, much of a sense it does not uh, it's not readable also so basically i will create uh, it back to data frame so i will simply write my uh, array name and then i will provide the column name so that is basically my extreme columns and my extrest column okay now if you want to look at it again then basically you see that now it is i'm back to my uh, i have created my data back to data frame in pandas okay now if you see then you can find that now the mean is at zero for all the variables which was not zero let me take you back there and if you see that earlier the mean was not zero it was very different from zero but now after scaling and standard deviation you can also take a look that it is not one so if you look at it now then you see that mean is now zero for all the variables you just forget this sign now because minus zero and plus zero or it doesn't matter similarly standard deviation you see that it is one okay so it is now so now you can say that our data has been standardized and it is at 0 and 1 so now what i will do that i will again fit a linear regression on my scale data okay so this is basically my x train is scaled and this is my y train now if i look at print the coefficients then you see that i have my coefficients here okay and this is my model insert intercept and this is my model score okay so just give me a second and now here i am with my score and now what i will do that i will create the prediction so you can uh, remember that we use dot predict on linear model to make the predictions okay if you want to look at your predictions then you can simply look at them by like this so you see that these are your predicted values for the test data or you can see your unseen data now the main part i will see what is the difference what is the difference in my mean square and my mean squared error and my r squared so since i do not believe that there will be much of a change because it was a small data set so you see that here it is like 0.35 and 744 something so for the r score here also there is a minimal change here and for mean squared also here is 33.02 and here if i see then it is 33.44 so a minimal reduction uh, in the mean squared basically so you see that your mean squared is gone uh, below slightly one main reason behind that is the few reasons basically that our variables are not let me just go back to unscaled data so you see that our data is not like this particular data set is not like very much off or very much skewed this is basically a fair accepted range it is in and the data set size is also small so these are basically few things uh, that are contributing for this uh, uh, very much marginal uh, increment in my uh, mean squared error or uh, my mean squared error has 
gone down by very marginal value so that is the reason that the database is fairly uh, normally distributed or not the values are fairly scaled already so but if you see that if you will do this on if you perform model on any very highly biased or skewed data then you will definitely see the difference anyways so basically this is the process of you know uh, transforming your data into a scaled data set so do let me know and uh, if you like this video in the comment section and please like and subscribe my channel okay thank you very much for watching this video